question 15. Um, so in, in the chapters of your book, you mentioned fast inflation expansion of information. And especially, although you did not specifically mention blockchain like Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's a very common critique that they're actually wasting an enormous um, you know, number of resources environmentally and on um, Earth, uh, limited ca capacity, and just to do uh, some transactions slightly faster. So what do you think about the environmental concern? I did a calculation for a previous book about the total amount of um, energy that the internet was using, and it's it's not. I mean, it's it's it was five percent um, of the total um, energy, so it wasn't really that significant. I mean, it's five percent is five percent, um, but it's not like fifty percent or or 75%. Um, and it can certainly be made more efficient. I mean, the, the remarkable thing is that our own brains are only 100 watts. Not, not even that. I think they're maybe even less. I mean, maybe 25 watts. It's, 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 uh, we're incredibly efficient. So we have very far to go in learning how to make our computation more efficient. And so... Um, when we do that, it will be better all around. So I would say it's an opportunity that we have that's before us. We're making strides, and it's good. Um, but it's not at the point right now where it's stopping anything. It's just that it's a huge opportunity for us to improve. And I, I just want to say one other thing about efficiency and inefficiency and that is um, uh, I think it's really good that we focus on efficiency of the machines that we make and the machines that we use and artificial intelligence and robots but the, the real value of humans is the fact that we're not very efficient and all the things that we value the highest from innovation creativity experiences are all fundamentally inefficient and so um, while I applaud our efforts to reduce the inefficiency in the machines um, I don't want to reduce our own inefficiencies as humans because I think our those efficiencies are the key to what makes us human and particularly what we can do that machines are not very good at right now. That's great, thank you. Well, since you mentioned um, AI, that brings us to question 16 on uh, the shared spreadsheet. Um, I, I was just um, telling um, the audience about how Taiwan focuses on developing personal AI in the sense of AI on edges on devices as our national agenda and that how we made it into our K-12 curriculum. So much like school children learn how to cook, how to use with fire, uh, perhaps fire wouldn't burn cities if everybody learns uh, from a very young age how to use fire and the same uh, goes with cognitive computing. But there are many people who worry about two things. One is that, you know, the fire gets uh, monopolized or centralized too much so that people ended up just subscribing instead of personalizing the AI and uh, becoming um, essentially enslaved. Uh, and of course, there's the other, the Elon Musk scenario, where the fire itself become a kind of fire god or whatever, and, and that uh, evolves general intelligence and just treats us as cats and dogs or worse. So what would you say? Um. So yeah, there there's many there are many questions there. Um, so um, let, let me uh, try to uh, address the first question, which is, can AI become self-aware? And the answer to that would be almost certainly yes. Eventually, we will make artificial beings or whatever. The question is, you know, how, how far in the future is that? I think it's pretty far away if we think of it as something as sophisticated as us. But the one thing I would just emphasize is that self-awareness is not binary. It's not like you have it or you don't. 
uh, cats have a certain degree of it. Maybe dogs have a certain degree of it. Chimpanzees have a little bit of it. Gorillas have more of it. Whales, porpoises, they probably have some level of it. And in our own robots and AIs, we will have various varieties of it. So all the things that we are going to be talking about from intelligence to personality to emotion, consciousness are all gradations and they're all highly diverse. They all have very many different varieties of them. So that's something we should keep in mind as we're talking about it. It's not a binary universal thing. There are gradations and there are varieties. So often people will say, well, yes, maybe some robots or AIs can have small amounts of consciousness, but what we're worried about is when you have a consciousness that has free will. And the, the problem with free will is that there's an argument about whether even humans, that means you, whether you have a free will. It's actually very difficult for you to prove that you have free will. I certainly don't. And so um, the idea of proving whether a robot or AI has free will or what that means is going to be very, very difficult. Um, and so uh, to answer this question from about Elon, the extreme version, what I would call the hard singularity, which is that an AI bootstraps itself by making an AI that's smarter than itself, that can make one smarter than itself, and it gets so smart and powerful that it decides it doesn't need humans. Um, what I would say about that is that scenario is possible. It has a greater than zero possibility, but it's very, very unlikely. Now, the fact that it's possible means that we should address it, just like uh, Earth or human civilization could be wiped out by an asteroid impact. It's very, very unlikely, particularly in the, ter in the scale of our own livelihoods and civilization. It's very, very unlikely, but it's possible. Therefore, we should have some people working on that project, and we do. But... The possibility of it, because it's so low, should not guide our investments. It shouldn't guide our policies for science. It shouldn't really gu guide our lives very much because it's such a low prob probability. And I would say the same thing about Elon's worry about AIs taking over and eliminating us. Yes, that's a possibility, but it's so unlikely for many reasons that we don't have to worry about it. And we can go through the reasons why it's unlikely. But remember that it's still possible, but it's just that it's a probability statement that it's unlikely. It's very possible an asteroid could come down. And um, it's almost certain in the long history of the planet that it will happen, but it's very unlikely to happen within our own civilizational sp our span. Right, so, so yeah, the asteroids will come, but we have sufficient time to develop uh, spacefaring technologies then. Yeah, and, and so um, a common, a common um, critique or worry for AI is that we don't have that kind of time uh, for an asteroid. Asteroids we can see very far off, and that AI is going to happen very rapidly and that, I also think, is very unlikely. Um, it's unlikely for a number of different reasons. Uh, one is we have no evidence so far that an artificial intelligence is increasing, that it's following Moore's law, that it's, that it's increasing at an exponential rate. Um, we actually find the, the opposite, that um, it's requires more and more resources to have a smaller and smaller gain in um, output. And so, um, and, and the fact that we don't even know what intelligence is, that we don't have any good metrics for it, uh, what we think we have in our own minds, 
Um, and because uh, involves, for, for us to discover this, it was going to involve um, uh, many, many experiments. I think people who expect it to happen very rapidly, um, that this is more of a, of a myth, more of a, again, it's, it's possible but unlikely. And it's unlikely based on the fact that everything else around us. We can see one scenario where this could happen, but that scenario is also an imaginary scenario that's never happened before. And so therefore we have no evidence that it would happen that fast. Again, we can imagine it, but that we can imagine Superman too, but that doesn't mean that it's possible. All right. That, that's great. Thank you. Uh, we're, we're working on that. So um, <clears throat> question 19. Um, so, so there's a logic in it. Um, so basically, uh, what this question is asking is about automation uh, and the replacement of tasks uh, by machines. But then it adds to it a twist, saying, but machines, as you mentioned, are like alien intelligence. And one of the key difference mm -hmm. is that the way the bandwidth, the communication between those aliens are much more mm -hmm. efficient in a sense, mm -hmm. uh, than human and machines do, or human and humans do, for, right. for the matter of fact. Right, so, uh, so would that change um, the, the relationships that we see toward those working alien partners or whatever? And, and if it will, and assuming that it will, what kind of new jobs of this symbiotic relationship and this asymmetry of mm -hmm. bandwidth will be created in the next 20 years? Yes. So that's a that's a very interesting interesting question. So we can certainly imagine the efficiency of communication between machine to machine. We'll, we'll call it M to M, machine to machine uh, communication. We could imagine to be very uh, high, very you know accelerated, superior to our communication between humans. But I'm not. I mean, I, I could certainly see that for certain kinds of, of jobs, but I'm not sure that when you get to a higher level of context or other things, it's not clear to me that machines actually will be more efficient than us. Um, we don't know. I mean, let me put it that way. It's an assumption. We and it's, I mean, there, for, there's no doubt that machines will be more efficient at the data level, the information level. But will they be um, as efficient in the level of knowledge or wisdom? I, I, uh, that remains to be seen. I could imagine both ways. I could imagine ways in which they are much faster, and I can imagine ways in which they stumble, and then turns out that our own agility is actually more important. So, so, so and maybe another way of saying it is um, speed may not be everything um, in communication. Um, yes, they can do it faster, but are they doing it better? And if you're just talking about information or data, speed is probably all there is. But when you get to talking about knowledge and wisdom, uh, speed is only one factor. So let me talk about emotion because that's very, very interesting, and I have a lot of interest in emotion, artificial emotions right now. So um, there's no question that we will program emotion into our AIs and robots. In fact, I think we're going to be surprised by how strong our emotional bond are with these artificial beings, these agents, AIs, robots, dolls. Um, but it's also clear that there will be aliens and that they may have emotions that we don't have or don't recognize, um, or they'll have variants and um, variations on emotions that aren't us. And so I think there will still be a recognition that they are maybe like us, but not of us, or that, there's a, that there'll be a differences. And again, some cases, maybe even emotions that we can't see or feel that they may be particularly attuned to, like alien beings. And maybe they can be emotional bonding between them and not us. And obviously there will be some humans who will be maybe more sensitive to their emotions. And we could call them like, you know, robots. 
bot whisperer, people who just have a special affinity to those machines. Um, so I think uh, I don't I don't see this as a. Uh, I mean, there certainly can be some downsides, but I think overall this is something we have some experience with with animals. Um, dogs, cats, they have emotions. They're alien to us. Um, they're not as sophisticated in their minds, but I think um, if a lot of the AIs we make are not going to be very sophisticated. Most of the AIs we make will be more like pets than they are going to be like uh, ET. And so um, I think we I think we are going to be I mean I think we we'll, we'll figure out how to, to to deal with that. I think it'll be very exciting and, and new, and there will be some again some people who will be gifted in communicating with these and understanding them. Um, and I think that's, that's fine. That's wonderful. There are other people who won't be able to get them at all. Maybe not, won't like them. And that's fine too. That's great. <clears throat> Reminds me of the movie Arrival. Uh, when someone uh, becomes attuned to alien intelligence as you do, they see the future as you do. Right. So, <clears throat> all right. So let, let's get to a uh, question. It, it's actually a, a very fine follow-up question because then we have in our family those you know, alien intelligences with emotions, and we build emotional bonds with them and so on. So how would you think that it would may change our family structure, which mostly exists to fulfill each mm. other's emotional needs? That's a good question. I think we're going to see this very quickly with children and dolls. Um, if you can imagine the emotional attachment that some children have with a doll, a doll that is inert, a doll that doesn't move, and yet they have a very strong emotional attachment. And imagine that they have a doll that talks back to them, that has a conversation with them. Or it's like a dog that they could um, ask questions and learn from. How powerful that will be. It would be like having another member in your family. And I think, um, I think this is a very interesting question of how the family dynamics will shift when you have children emotionally bonding to these other beings and and you know they're going to be like a dog but much different than a dog because maybe they're teaching the child at the same time um and so uh i think you know the the the, the concept in the old days uh, they had servants in families there was always the parents children relatives and then there were servants and uh they were part of the family in kind of a broader extended way and i think um and then there were pets so we ha we already have some kind of an image of family pets servants and now we may add these other beings and the relationships will be complicated and um uh new but I don't think that they're – I mean, I think we can kind of imagine them fitting into uh, a kind of a, an extended family of some sort. 